My name is Mark Spitz. I'm a professor of neurology here at the University of Colorado. I've been doing it for more than 35 years, and what I do day to day is I see adults with epilepsy. If we talk about epilepsy, it's a problem that we see in about every one in 120 people here in the United States. There's a spectrum of severity. The majority are on medicines. They take their pills and they don't have any seizures. They live normal lives and you don't even know that they have epilepsy. And then about a third are not controlled well and they tend to be the patients that I take care of the most. Now, what happens when a person has an epileptic seizure of the most common type is instead of just little sparks, a fire breaks out. And depending on where it starts, that will determine what the person experiences. And then just like a fire starting, it can spread to varying degrees before it fizzles out. In my experience as a physician, I've had patients that have been incarcerated, and one of the things that I've seen specifically are seizures that don't just stop and resolve, but can continue. So specifically, I've talked about a typical seizure, which might last a little bit less than a minute, and then there's a recovery phase, but on occasion, they can have multiple, one after another. Good man. The most common seizures, which are not convulsions, where they just are confused and not completely responsive, um, they might have some subtle movements or no movements at all, and then it stopped, and they begin recovering, and then it happens again. Hey man, can you hear me? And it can occur over and over and over again. And the point is... What's your name? That's very dangerous and potentially injurious to the brain. And also what's very important is it's treatable. So if you can get them quickly to medical attention, it can be diagnosed and treated aggressively, and that will minimize any potential for permanent brain injury. Can I get a code six medical to one north for enemy unresponsive? So in these cases that I've seen, there are some reasons that the situation is not as well understood as it should be. And one, as I mentioned earlier, is that people sometimes have this misconception that seizures are always convulsions. And that's not true at all. In fact, the majority of seizures that people have are not convulsions. It only involves a portion of the brain, not the whole brain, and they're just simply confused to varying degrees. A second thing that is confused is they'll find that people are partially responsive. They might answer a little bit. Um, they might respond physically if they're grabbed. And again, that can be either a seizure or recovery from a seizure and needs to be recognized. How long has he been like this? There's a saying, quote, time is brain. And that's the case with strokes. That's the case with epileptic seizures and other medical conditions that can cause this change in behavior. Do you know where you are right now? Jail. What we saw in this example was we had a man who was confused and responding only to a degree, and the people that were with him correctly realized that this was not normal, it was a problem. There are many potential reasons, but some of them are medical causes, including seizures, and some of these medical causes can cause irreversible damage if you just wait longer. Yeah, we got you, it's gonna be okay, all right? In this example, one of the things that I noticed as a physician is that he would turn his head and eyes to the right. And that's a common symptom that you'll see in these smaller seizures that, again, are very frequent. The main point is that it's an abnormal behavior. It just doesn't look right. They correctly recognize that and promptly called the physician and described his poor responsiveness and sent to treatment. Hey, doctor. If you look at vital signs in these people, they um, may be normal or frequently they may be abnormal, often just slightly. So a slightly elevated blood pressure, slight increases in pulse rate are fairly common with seizures and other medical problems that are occurring. One of the things I want to stress is the importance of getting to the next level of care if you're not certain. When you see something that isn't right, 
Don't make an assumption that this person may be malingering, may be faking it, which they certainly might be, but if there's other possibilities that you can't be sure aren't occurring that may need to be treated aggressively. So in this example, you see a person who is moving a little bit, but not, not responding appropriately when he's spoken to. And that can look like potentially faking, but it was an epileptic seizure. One of the things that we've learned is that after about 20 minutes of seizures, you pathologically see permanent brain changes. And once that was discovered experimentally, they went and looked at clinical cases of people that were having prolonged, continuous seizures, repetitive seizures. And from that patient data, they learned the same thing, that after about 20 minutes, you began seeing permanent changes in these people. So for example, they had lifelong memory troubles after that. And if we look at that particular individual, he went on having seizures for a few hours, and after it was finally diagnosed and he was treated aggressively and the seizures were stopped, um, now, some time later, he has permanent memory problems. And that's what we want to try to avoid if we can. That I know it's a difficult job, but I think it's important when you see these potential medical situations to keep an open mind and consider a medical diagnosis if you're not completely sure. And many of these medical difficulties respond to aggressive treatment, and we want to avoid any potential permanent brain injury that can occur if there are delays.